Hello, it's Fiona Witten from Oakville Crafts here. Uh, good morning to you on this rather dull, wet, miserable day in Wokingham. I hope things are better where you are. Um, I'm just double checking what's going on with my video to make sure that it is actually um, live. I think it is. It says it's live, but I'm in my usual pickle of not being able to see what's going on. So I'm going to just forget about that and not waste my time on it. So good morning to you all. Um, today I had a bit of a, well not an issue, but I couldn't figure out what it was that I kind of wanted to do. I was going to do some Christmas gifts, but then I realised that actually everything that I had to show you was going as gifts. And I know a few family members actually watch, so I didn't want to um, to spoil that. But I will share some things on the Facebook page in the next uh, few days or so, uh, just not as a live. Uh, so what I want to share with you today is a technique called two-step stamping. I know a lot of people think of that as, being, uh, uh, as something that is quite complicated to do. Um, but in fact, actually, it is very easy, but much depends on the type of stamp and two-step stamping that you want to do. So I just thought I'd show you quickly um, the two different sorts of two-step stamping that Stampin' Up! do. First off, you will see on the, and hopefully this isn't too shiny, on the case, it will actually say two-step stamping. And then you will have images. So for, for this particular set, Butterfly Gala, you have the outlines. And then so you would stamp those first. And then you would stamp the pieces that go and fill. So you could have black outline or you could have whatever colour outlines you want. And then you can um, stamp using this. And just so you know, like this particular stamp set, the stamps, so the actual images, where is it, this one, has are stuck together, but the wings are not. So you can stamp different colours in there. So that's one type of um, two-step stamping. I mean, the other, the other nice thing with this is if you decide that actually you didn't really want to use the, the, the block colour, then you could simply use those images and um, use your stamping blends or your watercolour pencils or ink and blender pen and colour these as you wish rather than having just the block of colour, although there are ways around that and that's a different technique that I'll share another time. So there's that type of two-step stamping. There's the other sort of two-step stamping where you actually put two stamps together and they're pretty solid stamps to make one image. So this stamp here, in the these two stamps here in high tide are case in point. Um, so you have two stamps, so you would stamp one and then you have to overlay the other with a second colour to give the one image. So it's kind of like this one, but um, this one is that you have to be a little bit more precise. can be done because of course these are photopolymer stamps so which means that's the added advantage that you can actually um, see what you're doing through them but rather than using those today I thought I would seeing as it's such a miserable day and we can all do the cheering up I would use a sneak peek stamp set which I've gone and buried there's a surprise I have literally gone and buried it I don't know where I've done with it um, it's called Art Gallery. It comes, it's going to be in, or it is in, the a new mini catalogue. So that's a nice sneak peek for you to see. Here we go. See the new mini catalogue. Um, I can't show you the contents, unfortunately. So 
I'll take that away and not not torment you. So this is the art gallery stamp set and there are various images here. So these two here will make up one flower. This one here, you use that, that little one there to make a flower, then you have leaves and other things as well, and sentiments. So without further ado, I'm going to share and show something that I made earlier in good Blue Peter fashion. So here, this is um, an example of the two step stamping the flower head is. So this particular one, I stamped it originally in Flirty Flamingo and then I over stamped it again with the second stamp again in Flirty Flamingo. I like this sort of stamp because it doesn't matter if you miss. Um, that's my kind of stamp really. And then this one I stamped in Flirty Flamingo and then I overstamped in Poppy Parade. Now the reason I did that was to go with the, um, the paper that comes in the fine art floral paper and it's delish. Love it. I'll show you, show you that so you actually get a sneak peek of quite a few things in the suite. So we have this paper. Um, the list of colours that are actually in that in this whole um, set of papers is actually quite extensive. So we've got like Merry Merlot, we've got Terracotta Tie, we've got Bumblebee, we've got Poppy Parade, we've got Flirty Flamingo. So that's one side and then the other side is sort of a geometric um, wash type pattern. This is another and that has um, a bumblebee geometric pattern again with the wash. Don't need that one. Uh, I think that's the one I just showed you. Nope. So this is another. I like this one. And then that has a um, slightly paler wash on the back. Um, this might not be everyone's colour because it has greys, it has a uh, pretty peacock, it has all sorts of things, but I, this is sort of my sort of colours. I like this very much. And then on the back we have, um, again, another wash. This reminds me of the like the textured walls that, you know, sometimes you'd go into restaurants back in the, in the days um, and they'd have this sort of funny, not quite stippling, but it was like it'd been plaster had been sort of washed onto the wall this is very very sweet so this is got this is knight of navy with terracotta and and mossy meadow and bumblebee and pool party and that's the mac I don't need that one and then last but not least there is this one um which again is um this would make a great background for um, if you wanted to make a picture or if you are into scrapbooking because obviously you can put your picture where you want. Um, but I will be chopping it up to make cards. And then the back of this, this is Pumpkin Pie uh, Petal Pink Flirty Flamingo combination. That, that's what that looks like. So that's the paper. There's more. Of course, if you get a stamp set like this, um, it screams out for dies. So we have the floral gallery dies. Oops. And in here, we have dies that will cut out stamped images so that one will cut out the leaves this one will cut out that big flower head and then there are others so this cuts out where is my where I put the box 
so this one cuts out this image now it doesn't um, meet the image exactly on here so don't be fooled um, this stamp set it's actually the images here are shown at 85% so the actual stamps are bigger um, this little one will cut this one out and then you have um, a saying and I can out, can, you know what it's not bad that I can't remember what it says I'm sure someone will just want to say is what it says and then you've got the sentiments so you've got sorry thank you best wishes thinking of you you are lovely miss you congratulations birthday and good luck and then these little ones will cut out the sentiments so that's the dies so I thought I would show you and share with you a few more color combinations so as I said this is flirty flamingo on flirty flamingo this is flirty flamingo with poppy parade over it so I'll just do one more so I'm going to do the leaf first in mossy meadow I mean obviously if you're um, going to be die cutting this then you can just do a whole row of leaves and then die cut them out and then similarly you can do a whole row of um, flower heads so I'm just going to and I'm hoping you can see this so because it's photopolymer I've got a piece of foam under my um, grid paper so that enables me to um, make sure that the, I get a good impression. But this time I am going to go with, oh, going to be a little bit different. And then the other thing is, is that you need to remember to um, clean your stamps. Um, that one's not so bad. I think this one. I think I cleaned it earlier. Yes, I did. So I'm going to use, I'm going to be somewhat different. I'm going to use pool party. So we can see. Um, and the trick is to find this dip here, the V shape for your flower. Sorry, I think I might have just head butted the phone and also apologize for the fact that this is um, shaking so I've done the pool party and now I can either go over again with pool party uh, I think I might do that she says having just put it away so I'm gonna go over it again with pool party and this is the second stamp um, and as I said, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be exact with this sort of one. I'm going to try. So unless you're using your um, stamp stamp apparatus, you are you'll end up with flowers that look different every time. So, and I'm going to do one more with the solid image in pool party i'm not going to put a leaf on here this time so i'm going to oops, just stamp here i think just so that you can see the effect now, i'm obviously not doing a very good job of getting the ink in the middle but i'm not going to go over this again because that little splodgy bit will get hidden by the second stamp now I know I used that stamp with pool party, but I'm not going to use night and navy, which is a much darker colour. So the beauty of these two-step stamping, where you're actually creating the one image with two stamps, is that you can have whatever colour combination that you like. I wouldn't necessarily recommend you go for some really wacky one. But, you know, you can, you can go a little bit mad and just play and enjoy, enjoy the stamping.
inside which ones that you like the most. I mean, out of these, I can't decide whether I like the this one, which is the flirty flamingo with the poppy parade. I also like the pool party with the pool party. I don't that one might grow on me. I might just need to leave it to um dry a little bit because the colours will be slightly drier. So I'm going to make, she says, this one into a card. And I'm going to use, oops, I'm going to get a fresh piece of cardstock and then, so a fresh piece of cardstock uh, and I do need to clean my stamps now. I'm like, Actually, you might not think it, but I did actually go and clean my Simply Chamois earlier. Doesn't look it, but it is clean. Well, my stamp is now clean because if you stamp on there, you can see that there's absolutely nothing coming off. So I'm going to clean this one as well. Yep. Um, and then the leaf doesn't actually need to be cleaned. I'm going to stamp on here and I'm going to do that one with the flirty flamingo and the poppy parade. But first of all, I'm going to stamp my leaf. Now, I'm not going to die cut all of these out. I, well, I'm going to die cut the image out as one whole. I'm not going to die cut the um, individual parts. So that is that. And then, how is it that I can have things here and they just kind of disappear on me? There we are. I buried them. So I'm going to start with the flirty flamingo. Put that out of the way. With the more solid two stamps. I'm just going to stamp that there. Close that ink pad because I don't want to put my hand in it. And then I am going to stamp the second image. And so, as I said, you don't need to be, obviously you don't want to be stamping it down there because that would be silly. Um, but you just really need to be kind of over it like that. Close that. Put them out of the way. Right now, as I, as I was saying, I'm going to die image and I'm going to use one of the dies from Stitch So Sweetly die set. I like these because they have stitching on and they have little scallops on. So I'm going to use this die cut die to cut this and I'm actually going to do this in front of you. I'm being very brave today. And this is why I just pray that I don't end up actually. Mm. Thank you, Esther. I like that combo as well. Whoops. Let's see. Yeah, I've got very well used plates already. And apologies for all the shaking. So this is the new stamp and cut machine. Or stamp and cut and emboss machine, I should say. Now I need a bit of washi tape on this. Why is he going to find the end when you want it? So I just want a little bit, just so I know kind of where it, this is. I'm just going to stick it in that corner and run this through. So people have asked me um, about the machine and how I like it. I do. I mean, I do like it. Um, the big selling big thing for me is that it actually folds up and it has a smaller um, place to sand 
if you know what I mean. You don't need to actually have a large area when it comes to storage. So I'm going to move that out of the way now. Actually, yes, I should have done all my stamping in one go. There we go. So take that out. So one cube. I've also got, I've already pre-cut my card base, so I've got a piece of Whisper White, the base card is um, Poppy Parade, and then I've used some of the um, paper. I just, I don't know, I couldn't decide whether to go for that side with all the flowers on, which makes a nice background, or just to go for the, the more subtle background. I think I'm going to go for the more subtle background. So I'm going to quickly glue this together. So I'm going to glue that to that first. Seems such a shame to uh, hide all the pretty paper, but needs must. So we're going to put that on here. Um, those of you who um, have ordered the kits for the card and a cuppa for next month, just so you know, they went in the post yesterday. So hopefully you will get them this week. So that's plenty of time, in plenty of time for, for next Wednesday. I'm assuming that the post office is not going to have any issues. Okay, now I could, if I want to, if I'm going to add some ribbon, now is the time to add it. And I had some. I know. Do it again. There we go. So I'm going to add some ribbon. Uh, scissors. I know some of you don't like tying bows. But honest, it is really easy. Uh, and I tend to do mine upside down. I know it sounds silly, but I found that for, for me, the way I tie them, it means that my bits of ribbon, well, she says, will hang down rather than up. But that's, that's the way I do it. And I know everybody has different ways. doesn't have to be perfect well so it doesn't have to be perfect for me it doesn't have to be perfect for some of you I know you much prefer it I managed to twist that which is not clever but there are ways and means around that no it's fine so I'm gonna put that on there like that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some dimensionals on the back and I will use those to hold the ribbon in place. Sometimes you end up with it a little bit too loose so you can use your dimensionals for making sure that it doesn't go for a wander. So, and because it's got dimensionals on it doesn't matter if there's a little bit behind there that's kind of a bit of a, a bit too much but it's such a small amount it's not going to make any difference to the card but if you otherwise you're going to end up um, spending hours and hours just making a bow no, I'd much rather stamp than make bows but bows are a necessity sometimes Right, you don't need to go too mad with the dimensionals. I mean, obviously they, they're your dimensionals, so if you want to go mad, feel free. 
Um, I don't, I try not to put too many on. So, um, do I want it central? Actually, uh, I'm going to put it just down in that corner just to be a little bit different. So I'm going to put it in that corner like that. So that's that. Uh, I'm going to add some rhinestones. I'll just add a bit of bling too. And I think I need to actually trim that bit of ribbon as well, but I'll do that in a second. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put more on here. Oops. On there. And again, rhinestones you can go completely mad with as well. It's really up to you. Down there. Just I like to make sure that they're odd. And I think I might have put that on a bit skew with. That being the case, just kind of lift it carefully and just pull it over and twist it slightly. That's better. There we go. So that's my card using the. Take that off. Using the new art gallery stamp set. So that's what the stamp set looks like. Um, and also the dies and the paper. This will all be available in the new catalogue or the mini catalogue that will be out on the 5th of January. Those of you who have um, purchased from me in the last six months, you'll automatically get a copy of that. And if you haven't and you don't already have a UK demonstrator, then I'm more than happy to send you a copy. Just simply um, message me um, and let me know that you'll be interested in one. Uh, and um, oh yes, there was one other thing. Um, don't forget today. Uh, yesterday was the Merry and Bright extravaganza. Stampin' Up have uh, extended it for all of today. So if you are interested in getting hold of any of the two-step stamping stamps, there are lots of them in the 2021 catalogue, and they're all 10% off. So um, that sale is not, it's been extended and it's going now until um, ten to, no yeah you know, one minute to eleven tonight. So just thought I'd let you know. So if there's is anything you still want, need to stock up on supplies or anything, then then um, yeah check out the sale. You can just go to oatfieldcrafts.com and then uh, click on the online store tab at the top. Uh, not everything is in the um, sale. There is a list of exclusions, but there's 800 and something items actually in the catalogue and 70 something of them are excluded. Mostly things like glue and uh, envelopes, sort of like the very basics. Um, but all, most stamp sets, um, in fact all stamp sets are thinking about it, most dies, bundles, etc. They're all in the sale. So um if you need any help with it, let me know and I will be back next week with another Facebook Live. You never know, I might be at my mother's. Uh, much depends on what happens with the, um, the lifting of the restrictions next Tuesday and what tier everybody goes into. So obviously if I am at her, then um, my internet will be much, much better. And um, that's it. Uh, thank you for watching and take care. Bye.